What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut, and we're here with the BMW M4. It's an S-Class, does really well. This is a great way to start capping off the week. This car is as competitive as the other ones we brought you in S-Class this week. I found that these BMWs are slotting into S really well. I had an A plus build, but it wasn't as desirable to drive, in my opinion. So I want to bring you guys the most competitive builds I can, not just fluff to fit into the meta of the week that I'm building. So that being said, if I'm bringing you a build, I want it to be fast. I want you to win in it. I want you to like it. I think this does a very good job of that. Big shout out to my man, Unc RC. We call him Uncle Ray Ray. He actually provided the music we're listening to for the build. He brought the M4 build. I tried to make a couple changes, tried a couple different engines. He honed it right into the very top of what it needs to be. It's very, very good. I didn't know what to expect when I was going to drive it. I loved it. Got some gameplay footage to show you guys. This thing does dominate. It's fantastic. It slots kind of between the 180 mile an hour super horsepower cars, but they're capped. They only go 180 and the 200 mile an hour beasts that are at the top of the different things. So this one does about 193. It's similar in comparison to kind of what the GTB was that we did uh, recently on the channel. So don't expect this car to walk on everything because it does lose in a sprint race to the McLaren F1, to the 71 Skyline GTR, you know, the God tier cars. This isn't there, but this is a very good car. It is very fun to drive. It handles very well. I've got only positive things to say about it. So instead of focusing on what it doesn't do, I will focus on what it does do, and it slaps. So let's dig right into it, you guys. For the engine in this build, you are running the 4.0 liter V8. That is the silver pro part. It's about five from the left. So if we start on the left, it's one, two, three, four, five. Base horsepower is 577 when you start. That's the brake horsepower. For the parts. You're going to be running gold for the first four. So you're going to be running gold super induction. You're going to be running gold super ECU. You're going to be running gold super fuel system. Gold super exhaust. You are going to be running a platinum elite roots supercharger all the way to the right. Sport bronze nitrous bottle. Elite Road Suspension, Platinum, Silver Pro Brakes, Elite Platinum Grip Tires, Elite Platinum Clutch, that all that comes in it. You are running the 5-speed Bronze Sport Transmission. You're going to run Elite Platinum Differential. I'm running nitrous grip, I'm running nitrous drift. We're working on micro drifting. The last video I did, it was the M1. If you watch the gameplay footage at the end of that, I show some really premium micro drifting, what it does, how you get yellow boost, the advantages of it. I'm working with my man Cube right now. We are working on putting together a tech video to show you specifically micro drifting, why it's good, what it does for you, how to do it. If you know what I'm talking about, Keep working on it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the M1 video. I have some really good micro drifts in that. But you need to run both drift and grip to be able to take advantage of that. For the handling, pay attention. This is a little different than all the other builds we've done. 95% grip. We're not full Beyonce to the left. We are one click off to the left. So go to 100, back it off one. 95%. Steering sensitivity. Do you? I'm two clicks off of center. Remain consistent to the best of your guys' ability, but find something sweet here that works for you. Downforce. I am, if you go all the way to the right, we're 330. I'm two clicks back. So if you're 330 all the way to the right, back off one, back off two, 329 slots us right into the top of S class. The downforce is important. You can go less. Oh no, you can't. You can't go less. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the other engines you can't. I apologize. I misspeak there, but you have to be right there. The slider has to be in that position. You have to be two clicks over from all the way to the right. Otherwise, it will not fit in the class with this build. A lot of people skip on the handling portion, and then they wonder why their car doesn't work. This is why. You don't follow the video. Traction control, off. Drift entry, I'm running brake tap. Overall, it's going to give you a very competent, very good BMW M4 GTS. Top speed, 191. Does about 193. 
826 on your horsepower, max torque is 754. Quarter mile doesn't matter, zero to 60 doesn't matter. The reason I say that stuff doesn't matter, you guys. A lot of you have heard this before because you watch my videos, you might be new, let me just educate you a little bit. Zero to 60, you do that one time per race, and that's from a dead start to 60 mile an hour. If you get a perfect launch, meaning the needle's at the right spot, you get that sweet spot, you get the boost, you go zero to 60 much, much faster than that statistic tells you. So already out of the gate, zero to 60 time doesn't matter. You never go slower than 60 for the rest of the race. So what do we care about zero to 60 times? And it's only first gear anyway. Who cares what first gear does? We're never in first gear. So that stat, we can throw that away. We don't need it, throw it over there. Next stat, quarter mile times. Quarter miles are cool, but it's from a dead stop to 13, 20 feet. That's how many feet are in a mile or quarter mile, you guys, 1320. So that being said, if you are running quarter mile times, your trap speed in these type of cars is gonna be maybe 130, 140-ish. That's what like a drag racing, maybe a 10 or 12 second car would do. That's what these are pretty much built at. That really isn't a statistic we care about. So throw away the quarter mile time. The quarter mile will give you more information than the 060 does, but really like, you want to do horsepower, you want to do torque, you want to drive the car. Stay away from centrifugal, that gives you stats that aren't real. I would recommend Root Supercharger first, and if you're really craving more of the top end and it accelerates good everywhere else, throw a single turbo in it. If you're looking for a mix between the turbo or the between the two, do the twin turbos. But that's, that's it. I never use centrifugal in my builds, especially at the upper class. It's just, it gives you a big horsepower number, but performance is not there. I'm not sure if it's a bugged part or if it just doesn't work like it says it does, but I don't know where it gets those horsepower figures from, but I think it saves them and puts them somewhere else that you don't ever have access to because, well, as we know, the game is bugged. I digress. BMW M4 GTS, compliments of my man Unk, sponsored by Unk RC, Uncle Ray Ray. When he does the music and does the build, I should have had the man do the gameplay footage and shoot the video himself, but... Uh, he's legit. I'm thankful to him. Thankful for the Corn Nut crew. They make it fun. Come and hang out this time. Join the Discord. I'm on stream most nights. At least most nights during the week. I'm in America. I'm in Central Time. So anytime after around 7 p.m. through usually 10 or 11, we're cranking it out, playing some Need for Speed or playing other games. Have a great rest of your day. Stay played for the gameplay footage. Stay tuned. See you next time. First race up on rails. I really like this track. It's a lot of fun. We do launch the car in third gear for you manual players. If you're running automatic, just get that perfect launch. For the manual players, watch the RPMs for the launch here. You're going to see it take off, get very high up in the RPM range. Like it looks like it's going to shift, and then it settles back down, and then it climbs again. So wait for it to settle before you shift into fourth. Watch this. Watch the needle. See how it bobbled and went down a little bit, then we shifted? That's important to do. It helps you with your launch a lot, you guys. Otherwise, it's just a sprint race. This first corner, this U-turn to the left, is really technical. You want to take it inside. You want to maybe brake early or e-brake in, so that way you stay on the road or at least the sidewalk. Going in the grass is a death sentence. I've gone up into those trees more times than I'd like to count. We stay tight. We go through the gas station to top up our boost, and now we start this section with a full tank of NOS, so that's the move. You want to keep this as tight as possible. I go a little wide and then have to e-brake to make sure I don't hit those parked cars. I run along the side of the parked cars to pick up near misses. So you'll see me doing that periodically, either running in oncoming or getting near misses from parked cars. Keep that last corner tight so that way you can kind of cut a straight line through here. Keeping it tight here. I go behind this car so that way I don't get involved with it. Keep it tight here as well. I'm going to e-brake and boost at the same time. Use that yellow boost to get up to speed. Now we're off and running, and we are making quick work of this track. I like this track a lot. It's got a couple of good straightaways. You'll see the car gets up to about 192, 193, and that's all it wants to do. So we do use the entire transmission here. Cars that have a 208 top speed might catch us, but if you get ahead enough, you shouldn't have any problems. It is a really solid baseline level car to drive, and it's very easy to steer. Alrighty, blue collar for our second race. I launched the car in fourth gear this time because I want you guys to see the difference, you manual players. 
Once again, automatic players. Just watch for the lines. Watch for getting to your perfect start so you can make the most of it. Look how long we end up staying in fourth gear compared to the last race. It comes down, it settles, and we are in fourth gear a long time. I'm recommending you shift this car into third when you launch. Regardless, we downshift, we get into this corner, just drifting and then doing a bit of a micro drift. I go super wide because I'm trying to carry that drift as much as possible to use the yellow boost, but I end up clipping the wall, sliding, getting sideways. It just all goes south really fast. Pretty much a big waste of a yellow boost bar. We get back up to speed. Gonna use this as a nice little drifting turn to get that yellow boost up. Use all three bars to try to catch back up. We're gonna tuck in behind these guys. I'm trying to keep it on the concrete. Keep that acceleration up. This car doesn't love the dirt. And now we're dispatching our opponents and doing the best we can to just keep a, a good line. The car started to drift there, so I counter steered to get out of it because I did not want to be sliding. I want to try to be in a grip to get acceleration. And you'll see I use yellow boost every single time I get it to get the car up to speed. And the faster you can get up to a higher speed, the quicker you're going to walk away from your opponent. So just bear that in mind, you guys. It's best to use nitrous on the low end of things than it is on the high end. Just hold our line through the dirt. There's that skyline. The car is so fast. He kind of pushes us wide, so I just full commit to the dirt. Use all my nitrous to keep my speed up and just go with it. He hit that car back there, so... It's okay. Our, our safety line in the dirt, even though it was a bit slower, was overall faster because we didn't get tangled up with an accident. So now we're gripping and drifting. Watch that yellow bar. Here it comes. Okay, so drifting. And then it should give us a grip turn. There it is. There's the grip turn. So we're doing both in these corners, you guys. Like, I'm using the drift to accelerate and then using the grip turn boost to get the straightaway speed. We're getting two yellow bars for one corner, and that's really good. So there's the drift. Here comes the grip. Boom. Micro drifting is really, really advantageous, you guys. You get a lot more yellow nitrous, and that's really the key to fast accelerations. And our last race of the playlist will be Rapid Transit. This track is nothing special. It's just a left turn and then a long left turn. I feel like we're doing mini NASCAR, but... Regardless, we launched in third that time, and then I quick shifted to fourth. I should have let it settle before I shifted, so that was a mistake I made. But, as you guys can see, manual transmission prevails off that launch, and that's worth it alone. Coming to this corner, I downshift and just keep a nice tight line. I get a little bit out of shape there. The next couple corners do a lot better for me. That ended up just being one big grip turn. The biggest thing, you guys, is staying clean. If you don't crash, your chances of winning are so much higher. Because usually, the people that don't crash win. If you crash, you have to have a lot of skill to catch back up. If you run a flawless race, you can pretty much let all of your opponents crash, and then you're good. Driver mod's a big deal, but running clean is also a huge, huge portion of that. I use that yellow boost after that corner to get us up to speed car went up to about 195 there with that yellow boost so the car does have some legs it's no 208 crazy skyline monster but uh, it, it definitely holds its own so I drift in and then I tried to tap there to get the mini nitrous or the micro drift but it didn't happen regardless though we got two and a half bars of yellow boost to use that nice grip turn get back up to speed be looking for the patterns of the driving style I'm using nitrous to accelerate. I very rarely will use nitrous at the top end of the gear. The yellow boost I had there will expire, so I always use it going into the dirt, even though it's kind of a waste, but better to use it than to lose it. This is one long turn. We're going to come out of this with a grip turn, and I use it immediately. Now we're bouncing off the red limiter. When you're at top speed, don't use any nitrous. There's no reason to. You're not going faster, you're just wasting one of your resources. Last time through this corner, I e-brake in, try to hold a line. There it is, but I ended up counter-steering, so it just one big grip turn instead of a micro grip. Our friend in the G-Wagon is uh, riding the struggle bus, so we're going to get a little bit of lap traffic. Uh, you got to wonder how he's feeling getting past uh, 
on a three lap race. I mean, we've only been racing for two minutes and 20 seconds and we're lapping the guy. So we're flying in comparison. But Notorious in second place is also keeping pace with us. He's a pretty good driver as well. So shout out to him for keeping pace. Using my nitrous to get back up to speed. Holding that line. Coming out of this with a nice big grip turn. And then using that to get right back up to top speed. Very solid car, all in all. Big thanks to Unk RC. And thank you to you for watching and staying through the gameplay footage. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.